be recording. <laughs> Linda. No. <laughs> Carrie. Oh, she can't hear. And she's not, she's not, oh, oh, yes. All right, we started the recording. Yes, I can see it. Yes, yes, yes. It's great. Life is good. <laughs> you know what? You always need a little bit of a roller coaster because that just makes everything better when it all comes together, right? So exactly. this has been a process, you guys. Talk about, Carrie and I have been uh, do, trying this for the last 45 minutes to try to get this recording started. So, um, and then Carrie, you're going to, of course, you've got what you see on your screen is what's going to be recorded. So hopefully, Carrie, you, you're managing that part. Welcome, everybody, to the HEAT team call. Really excited tonight because we are going to have the newest HEAT team national marketing director do our call tonight. I can't believe we waited this long to have you on, Melissa, as our guest. So, um, and I just what I want to tell you, for those of you that don't know about Melissa, and, and I, I can't get to the your bio, Melissa, because nothing on my computer is working, nothing anywhere is working at my house today. So, but what I can tell you is that she's a mother of two little girls. She was in corporate America. She uh, worked for a while, and I think, you know what, I'm going to have you tell your story, but what I am going to say about Melissa is Melissa's got big, her burn is helping others make sure that they can choose the best life possible for themselves. So, will you tell us your story, Melissa, since I can't find it anywhere, and then you're going to share. I know you're going to do some screen sharing tonight, and hopefully it's all going to work. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll jump right in, um, and thank you guys for getting on. This is exciting for me to do. You know, I've gotten to know more of the Heat team players in, over the last couple of months, especially in a recent trip to Mars, which was super fun. And it's just an honor to get on here. So, Nikki and Chris, thank you first and foremost for your support. You've been instrumental in my own development and in the development of my team. And it just it shows, like, it's just a testimony of what we have to invite people to when they come into so much love and so much – you know, partnership. And so I'm so grateful for everything that you've given to me and provided for Lisa and our team. And it's just been an incredible journey together. So, um, so I have been around for a while. I've been in the business for over eight and a half years. I got started um, a long time back and really Juice Plus came into my life at the perfect time. I was not looking for anything. I was not one of those people that took supplements. I wasn't open to it, none of it. Um, but my dad had gotten cancer. And it really opened my eyes to a few things. It had me asking a lot of questions. And I was going down a road of discovery and really finding that, you know, the more fruits and vegetables we add to our diet, the more protected we are from everything. And that was just a universal truth. So, you know, it made sense to me. But again, I wasn't quite in that readiness place. And the best thing that happened was my husband was the one who introduced me first. And then Lisa got smart and asked me to go to an event. And I got to see Wendy Campbell first in front row, right? <laughs> Who can't, you know, have your life changed by that experience and really got me thinking about what this was. And so again, stubborn New Yorker that I was, I, I wasn't ready to say yes then, but I went back and I researched more to the point where I felt comfortable. And I think that that's really my approach to working with most people is just, where are they? You know, where are they? What are they willing to do? What steps are they willing to take? And just helping them take those next little steps, whether it's a team member or a customer or a prospect, I think it's just really important to get to know the people around us. And so I did that. I started down the journey. It, you know, I couldn't find a reason to not take it. So, and I certainly, more importantly, wanted my dad taking G Plus. And so I signed up as a rep and a customer the same day. I was one of those five percenters with zero intention of building a business, with zero you know, reason to really at the time, but I knew he was not gonna buy it from anybody but me. He's even more stubborn than myself. So um, we got it in his house and that was a win. And I went to conference about five days later, another brilliant thing Lisa did. She was like, I don't know if it's even feasible, but if you wanna hop on a plane, we're gonna go have some fun and you can room with some girls. And I was like, you know what, maybe that's a good idea. I'll just go and check out and see what this company is all about. And it built my belief in the product for sure. I got to see Smokey Santillo firsthand. It was back in those days. And I got the research in my hand. I remember buying it and reading it and going through it and geeking out and feeling so empowered by all that. So I fast-tracked to VF and then um, did nothing else. <laughs> you know, I just I got to figure it out that it made a lot more sense to do 2,000 points in a short amount of time than 6,000 over time. 
and to get to the same place. So I did that. My Y was accomplished. My B was, you know, checked off. My, the people I cared about were taking it. And then I just sat on the sidelines for a while and I was working a really big six figure job. Um, really not a lot of time for anything, but I was squeezing in time to learn and I was listening to three way calls. I was doing all that kind of thing. And that's the part that kept me plugged in the voice calm, the connection, the going to the events, all of that. I was in love with the community. I was in love with the, you know, the education and about 18 months past point. I came, to really a life crossroads. And I knew that life was getting serious with my husband. We were dating at the time. I knew kids were coming into my future at some point and I couldn't be the mom I wanted to be doing the work I was doing. So for me, this was a really good option. And I have to be honest, it wasn't my idea. Again, it was my husband. <laughs> he was saying, he said to me, you know, you're so in love with this. You've always got a doctor playing in your car. <laughs> There's always some kind of medical professional something going on. and. He said, why not? What would happen if you treated it like a business? My sister's made a great living. I know you could too, you know? And it was really that vote of confidence and that little nudge that got me taking it seriously. And so I said, all right, I've got six months saved up. I had prayed for some direction and got it pretty quickly and, um, and said, let me go for it. And so I actually, unlike most people who are smart and build this, you know, their, this alongside their second income, I lost my job on a Tuesday morning and I didn't go back is what I chose not to do and said, let me just give it six months. And I built it fast track to sales coordinators to be up to fast with senior sales. I was part of that group that did those first uh, rounds abouts. And then again, life happened, you know, and this is why I tell this part of the story because there's so much flexibility in what we do. And I think it's important to, again, meet people where they're at. I had so much love and grace around me. And when that first child came into my life unexpectedly, a little, a lot sooner than I was necessarily you know, ready for, I'm like that classic planner and God always laughs and goes, oh, that nice little plan of yours. Here you go. You got this instead, you know, kind of thing. And so it took me out of the game for a while. And I really honored that time. I honored the time with my family. I had the freedom to do that. I got to take basically three years to build two beautiful girls and the foundation of a family that I'm so grateful for. And then I got the itch again, you know, and I prayed and I asked for some really clear guidance and said, you know what, God, just make it so obvious for me that this is my time that I can't ignore it. And within three weeks, Danielle Colavito and Brie Iarusi showed up on my team. And if you guys know those girls, they're amazing. And so it really got me inspired to take the next step and, and roll up my sleeves. And I reached out to everybody on the roster and said, okay, you guys ready to go? <laughs> you know? And the ones that were came along and the ones that weren't didn't, and we moved on and we just, you know, filled up the team and went at it and had some fun and we've been growing ever since and it's been like Buster's wild you know crazy on hair on fire kind of growth and it's been super fun so tonight we're going to talk about um basically the system that we've been using to to generate that kind of momentum and growth and i put it into a you know a couple slides that i think will illustrate it for you clearly and then at the end of this, I'll post a document that we're using that Brie found for us. It was part of the Wendy Campbell startup um, work booklet that she has, which is a great tool, but that's like got a lot of pages to it. We just took this one page out and really used it and it kind of summed up everything in a simple manner. So I'm gonna go to share screen and pull that up really quick. Okay, and if I can get to show play, here we go. Okay, so basically, um, I'm going to take you through what it looks like, and we didn't call it this when we were doing it, but this is what we were doing, and this is what we were doing over and over again, which really give us the leverage to grow quickly. So first, when we sit down with a new person, we always show them the vision of what is available to them, and the two things that I highlight on this particular staircase that I think are just the most important piece to crack the code, if you would, are the sales coordinator piece at 22%. And I actually use the old sheet that has the 5% listed and I circle those two things for them when I sit down with a new rep. And I show them, you know, the residual pieces from the five and the, you know, the smart pieces to get to 22 because you're earning every dollar available to you in this comp plan. And with each new step, the company gives you another bucket to put money into and that's going to help you build vision, see that there's more in front of you and show them, you know, all the way up to national marketing director, which will give you benefits and bonuses and all sorts of stuff along the way. Now I don't go too in detail at first. I just want them to know that there is a plan because I think it's important that people have trust and faith in steps in front of them and that there's something to follow. 
And then, um, and then I kind of asked them some questions about what they want to get out of this. For me, again, my why when I first started, it had nothing to do with any of this. It was that I wanted my dad signed up. How do I get it in his house? He's, you know, let me get his credit card and I'll ship him something. That was really like, how do I place an order? That was what I needed to know. But after conference and seeing that there was some, you know, like fun attached to it, I can, I can go quick and I like to go quick at stuff. Then I was like, all right, let me do that one step. Right. And I got there. So find out what people are willing to do and then help coach them to that place is kind of what we found works. Um, so this, this is the sheet here and we call it the 1225 system. Um, and it's now actually on the virtual office. They're calling it the memory jogger. They put something on there, which I'm going to ask them to take that off, but they just added it the other day. I found it. Um, I'm sorry, in the mission driven model, they just added it a couple days ago for us, which is cool. Um, but a lot of people are using this now and they wanted the sheet. And so basically the way we work this out is that we show them the staircase, we take them to their virtual office, we log them in and we help them place their first trio order. Once the trio is placed, then we take the sheet and put it in front of them and say, okay, great. The first thing we're gonna do is mark your name down up here at the top, because you are your first customer. And I'm looking for my mouse, there it is. And so so they'll put a name in and they'll write trio because we're only going to measure trios and there's a reason for that. We want to build strength and consistency into their paycheck. That's where people measure their success. At the end of the day, if they're doing a lot of activity and a lot of work and their paycheck is just measly, it's like, you know, $100 or $200. It's not enough motivation to keep people focused and going. So if we can build them some success quickly, then I find that they stick around longer and they get more invested and they grow faster, which is always more fun. So um, their name, the trio, the order date of when they put that in, and you don't necessarily have to fill in the points, but the most important thing you do then is you take this line and you draw it across at 12. Because if you add up the math, if you have 12 trio orders and some team, you've got your 2000 plus completed. And the reason that we did it this way is that we found that when you talk about 2000, first and foremost, it's an unfamiliar number. Second, it gets people really dialed into the details and they get overwhelmed with which product is which points and how many of that. And if I do this, okay, 70.5, wait, what was that 169? They get really caught up in the, the, like, the little stuff. And what we really want to help them focus on is the most important piece, which is talking to people, fine tuning their story, getting really you know, confident and really ready to move forward. And then building the activities that are going to lead to the results to fill in this page. So if let's just say you have a husband and wife team and they fill out the first two. So it's Melissa and Paul, right? That's my family. Then I can say to them, great. So now all we need to do is get 10, right? Let's focus on 10. Where can we get 10 from? And we know that the average, um, the average event is going to yield, you know, about five to seven orders, especially for first people, because there's, it's the first time they're doing it. So people are excited and they want to show up and come. And so that helps. And if you do it early in the month and you have two scheduled, then you have two more weeks or three more weeks to fill out another, one or two events to get the rest of what you need. It just builds in time and it's smart. So we try to really set people up for that success. And the New York team specifically is doing an incredible job with the events. They've been really coachable, and, you know, across the country and really just doing this. They're knocking them out of the park and they're filling rooms with 14 people at a time, sometimes more than that. And that's where a lot of this comes from. So they fill in their 12 trios. They've got, we drag along a team member. The addresses always seem to work out because the focus is in the right place. There's some extra stuff, of course. They're bringing on shakes and everything else. And what happens is they close out this 10, well, the 2000 plus, they close it out in about 30 days, sometimes 45, depending on the timing. But it's usually somewhat dictated by the timing of their events. So do them early, you'll get there faster. And then the next month they walk right into qualification because they have at least one other team member that's coming on and doing the same and they're working on their 12. And most of these people who are following this are walking into like 750 residual points in their PB column. And that's big because it's really empowering them to teach them what the next steps are. But the cool part of this that I love the most, and that's why I love this sheet is that it really draws your attention beyond that first marker. And I think that the mistake we make a lot of times is we talk about the HLP and we get people focused on two other households, but it, it shrinks their brain a little bit to think of only two, right? If they think of 10 and they've got to think of how do I get the 10, then they're really kind of forced into action quickly to get that ball rolling. And the next step of this is that they're looking at, oh, it doesn't just end there. I can move on. My goal is to get to 25. So the other thing that was kind of fun about this whole thing <laughs> It fell right into line with, you know, the customer qualified, you know, stuff over the summer that we're doing the summer surge and all of that. But it also lends itself to a little tricky 
thing to remember, which is 1225 is Christmas. So we're teaching people, if you fill up your whole sheet, it's like Christmas. You've got a residual paycheck, something to count on. It's like a gift to yourself every month, right? And there's some kind of what? mental, uh, you know, thing there where it sticks and it, it kind of sticks in your brain. All right, so the recipe to filling up the sheet here is really what we focus on is five to 10 new customers and two to three new reps per month. And we do that every month for the first six months. If you do the math, and you look at it, if you're working on adding two customers, and I'm sorry, two new reps, and then the second month you add another two reps, and everybody's filling up 12 customers, you only need 48 trios to be a sales coordinator. So what did we find? We found that people were walking into sales coordinator month three, month four. They didn't need the full six months. So not only did they have a qualified business, but now they've got duplication. And this is fun, and this is what people wanted to be a part of. So the key here, as I see it is really kind of um, choosing wisely and especially with a new person, like really getting their mind right so that they can go look for the right stuff to make them successful. I think, um, you know, gearing them towards the ideal customer. So finding people that are going to say yes, not finding people that you have to convince, right? We went through that years ago and it was just a daunting task of like, you know, yes, there's an article that says that, you know, McDonald's cheeseburger burgers aren't good for you. you know, just a lot of really like a lot annoying education that we had to do. Now it's totally different that social media is doing that, but who's paying attention? So we look for people who are open for information. We look for people who want to make a change, people who are happy and optimistic. We don't want to get that, you know, cousin who complains about everything, sits on the couch, does nothing with their life because why would we want to torture ourselves in the first 20, you know, 12 customers that we get? We want to get good, happy people that are ready to move forward. So, um, you know, people who see value in quality products, you can tell this by their behavior. What kind of purses do they buy? What kind of cars they drive? What kind of shoes do they, you know, wear? Like, where do they shop? Are they willing to spend a little bit more for a quality product, right? I think that's a really important qualifying question for you to ask about people. Are they willing to invest money in themselves or their well-being? Do they go to a nice gym? Are they, you know, signing up for that bar class that costs $18 or whatever it is. Like, it doesn't have to be necessarily all of these things, but if you see some of these things in, in qualities in people, they're telling you that they're a good fit. And that's going to be a much easier conversation to a yes than somebody who isn't necessarily, you know, not that we discount them, but we just want to set this new person up for a lot of yeses because it conditions them that, yeah, I can do this, right? So, um, also, this is really important, but someone you like interacting with, you're going to be calling them, you know, for customer care and taking care of them on a regular basis. It, it should be people that you like, you know, and a yes person. Are they the kind of person you call them and say, hey, there's a new restaurant in town. Do you want to go? They're like, yeah, let's go. Let's go check it out. You know, are they open? Those are the kinds of people that I try to um, pay attention to and spend some time with and have those conversations with. So um, I did some coaching with Gordon Hester over the last couple of months, and he's always got such great insight. And he said, Melissa, you know, you're spending a lot of time focused on these new customers and that's bringing a lot of acquisition and growth, but for the stability of your team and the long-term success, the repeat business is what you really need to focus on. So really get, you know, good at that, get good at that and really bring your team into an awareness about customer care and, and having that happen. So it is like a two part process, which is why we go back to this sheet and we take people through this. And what we want them to do then is when they fill up their 25 really be working in that four month period on solid customer care. And the reason I love this system so much is it's one simple sheet. It's one sheet in front of you. Who do I have, you know, buying trios from me? You can look at it every day. You could even put their phone number in under the product section if you wanted to. Um, it gives you their order date. So you have an idea of when things are going to ship, which is nice to keep in mind visually in front of you. But the, the key is the stars, you know, are you doing the customer care needed to make sure that they stay. And we also have to teach our people that they're going to lose some people too. And that's okay. And just having them almost, you know, not expecting them all, all to quit, but just having them conditioned so that they know that's okay. And the process is ongoing. And the goal is, you know, if you're really working at this for a year solid, you should have a solid 25 to 40 customers really full, you know, a full sheet with stars indicating that they're a repeat customer and they're buying from you regularly. And if you can get people taking Juice Plus for a year consistently, we know there's a really good chance they'll be on it for a really long time. So that is the key there with that and the stars. And, you know, it's again, like hanging the stars on the tree and you know, bring it back to that Christmas analogy. But there's also <clears throat> obviously this other piece of it where we're working on distributors and what we want to attract. 
And so I like to take our, our team through, and if we had more time, we got off to a little bit of a late start here, but I take them through this exercise of really identifying what are the qualities that they're looking for, who do they want to surround themselves with, who are the people in their life that they want to attract, and also, you know, where are their weaknesses that they can fill in some gaps? Like, I am not a strong admin person at all. If anybody of you, if any of you have ever been expecting an email from me, you know, it probably didn't come on time. <laughs> and it's not because I don't care or and I'm not professional. It's just that there are some places in my brain that don't operate at optimal speed like the rest of them, you know. But there's other things that I excel at. So what I do is I try to play to my strengths and surround myself with people who can fill in gaps of my weaknesses and together we make a really strong team. This is so much fun, you know? So these are some of the things that we look for in words that we've come up with, but I would really encourage you as you're sitting down with this new person to take out a blank white piece of paper and give them the freedom to fill that up with things that they want to attract because so many people are in jobs that they, they don't like, you know, when I was in corporate America, there were so many things that I had such a hard time with and if I had had the opportunity and believed that I could actually build a life of my own and build it with people that I want to spend time with, I think, you know, it, it would have been a really amazing journey to start a little bit earlier because it would have empowered me to even do better at what I was doing. So this is the chance to do that, to really create that life for us. So the things we find, you know, first and foremost, are they fun? I put that on here twice for a reason. You know, we like to have fun on our team. Are they energetic and personable, coachable, ambitious and driven? You know, again, willing to invest. Are they going to travel to conference? Are they excited to learn? Are they a raving fan? Maybe they're coming from that space. Maybe they're not. Are they trustworthy? That's probably the most important piece for me is that I can speak openly and communicate honestly with my team because we go through life together, you know, and I think that's such a really critical piece in, in working cohesively and working well together is that piece of having that communication. Um, are they hardworking? You know, do they show up in other areas of their life and go the extra mile? Are they happy? You know, and again, are they fun? And are they willing to have some, fun, you know? And so these are some of the things that we like to look for. Um, and then we take them back and we really tie this whole process together and we drill in the, the idea that, okay, so we've got your first one or two trios in the system. Usually people start out with about two. Um, we help them get the third, a bonus comes along the way. And you, I don't necessarily t tell them about it so that they're working towards it. I tell them more as like, a, hey, look, by the way, you've got a little bonus showing up in the mail and Good job, you're halfway to your, you know, your, your 12. Let's go finish and get the rest. And so it's just like a nice little pat on the back, I find, rather than something that's like, because some people will turn that HLP into the finish line and then they wait a whole nother 30 days, you know, or wait till the end of the month to get started on the rest. So um, I just find that taking their gaze, it's kind of like running a, a race, if you would. You're, you're running. And your coach is going to tell you, don't look at that finish line, look 20, 30 yards beyond that and run straight through it. That's what we want to do here. We're setting people up for success. So they run right into a paycheck, right into qualification. And if they teach their team to do the same, then, you know, they bring two or three other people on. They really could hit sales corner in a 45 or 60 day period easily. So, um, and we've, we've done that. So the more we play, the better we get. Um, I really try to encourage this with new people, especially, and this has been such a common theme through our whole growth is that, well, let's just try again. What else can we do? What else can we do? What else can we do? What's another angle for that? What's a different way to, you know, express that information? How else could you ask the question? Always trying to find another way, you know, and just not giving up until we do. And our team is just filled with warriors. And I am just so impressed by them every day that when they put their mind to something, boy, like watch out, you know, it's just been absolutely incredible down to the wire. Every qualifier's day has been like running a marathon, <laughs> you know, just been really having an awesome time and playing, you know, really well. So that is the system. That's what we've been doing. It's, you know, it's pretty simple and to the point, but we just find that when you simplify things, they become duplicatable. And that's, I think, why we're populating so quickly. So <clears throat> that's what I got, Nikki. Hey, Melissa, first of all, great training. What a great start to your, uh, I know you've been doing this training around, you're at the San Diego Ultimate Boot Camp and you've done it for some other teams. Um, so I'm just excited that you're part of our team. You're a great trainer. You're fun to look at. So this has been a delightful evening. And I, I really got, when you know, when you first said 1225 Christmas, my first reaction is, feels corny and then I thought oh my gosh it's not corny at all it really expresses the idea that not only have you gifted 
12 to 25 people, but you're gifting yourself, you're gifting your family, you're gifting everyone a little bit of a better future. And I love that. Everybody looks forward to the holiday season, right? So I thought that was a great analogy. I really enjoyed it. And this is really simple. Just think about, and I like, you know, you, you and your husband or you and one other person get basically started and you only got 10 more. 10 more is not very hard to think about 12. And of course, if you've got, um, if you've got, uh, if you're doing shakes, yeah. But I love the idea of really focusing on a minimum of 12 trios. That's what we do. So great.